Hello everyone, this is Mr. Monota. Welcome to our first chapter discussion. The introduction of bar and beverage service management. But before we start with our discussion, may I know if you are also one of those individuals, dreaming to be part of the bar and beverage service industry? If yes, then, you should listen very well and enjoy learning. Let me start with the question. What is bar? Or, what is bar and beverage management? Why it needs for us to know, and learn the essential things that every bartender and bar manages to successfully manage a bar operation. Or maybe, you were also asking, how do management is important in every business, and to the bar service personnel. Well, let's start with the word bar, an establishment. Late 12th century, steak or rod of iron used to fasten a door or gate, from old French bar beam, bar, gate, barrier. From vulgar Latin, barra bar, barrier, which some suggest is from Gaulish barrows the bushy end. Furthermore, a bar, also known as a saloon or a tavern or sometimes as a pub or club, is a retail business establishment that serves alcoholic beverages, such as beer, wine, liquor, cocktails, and other beverages such as mineral water and soft drinks. Bars often also sell snack foods, such as potato chips or peanuts, for consumption on their premises. Some types of bars, such as pubs, may also serve food from a restaurant menu. The term bar also refers to the countertop and area where drinks are served. The term derives from the metal or wooden bar, barrier, that is often located along the length of the bar. One, over many years, heights of bars were lowered, and high stools added, and the brass bar remains today. Furthermore, the bar and beverage management, is the result of the development, of what we call the bar and beverage service industry. The progress of the bar and beverage industry, opens the need to carefully study and learn every aspect of the management function to have bases towards successful bar service operation. These bars and beverage service industries, are establishments, or businesses that offer primarily beverage products and services, sometimes with food products, and sometimes with entertainment. While, management, on the other hand refers to the ability to get things done through others. Therefore, the management in bar operation is not only limited and refers to the bar managers, but this also refers to how they make use of every individual in the team to become efficient and effective in the workplace. Next, when do bar service industries started? According to some references, bar and beverage service industry generally started during the development of the early hospitality industry, those early for of accommodation service for the travelers that may need other services such as food to eat and beverage to drink. In fact, the presence of early bar and beverage services can be traced during the Sumerian period, 4000 BC, in Mesopotamia. Although there are many civilizations that exist during or even before Sumerians, that may also practice as bar and beverage services. Yet, only the Sumerians were able to put into the record this early evidence of beverage services. Meanwhile, some part of Mesopotamia before is the present country of Iraq. Sumerians are known as the most civilized and progressive group of people during that time. In fact, Sumerians are skillful in particular too trading, farming, and craftsmanship. Furthermore, Sumerians are also had a great contribution to the development of the later civilizations, such as wheel invention, cuneiform writing system, early astronomers, invented and developed arithmetic, including mixed radix system, invented military formation and military divisions such as infantry, cavalry, and archers. The first early city-states arose. Intensive knowledge in agriculture and irrigation. To understand more about Sumerians in Mesopotamia, please watch this video. Hello friends, welcome to a new happy learning video. Today, we're going to learn about the first and most important of human civilizations. Today, we're going to learn about Mesopotamia. 
The word Mesopotamia means between two rivers in Greek. So this civilization was named because it's situated between two rivers, Tigris and Euphrates. Within these fertile lands, the first ever city-states were born 4,000 years before Christ. The most important cities were Ur, Uruk and Lagash. These city-states were independent from each other. They were surrounded by a great wall to protect themselves. The ziggurat, a temple where priests lived, was built in the center of the city. Here, they controlled trade, agriculture and taxes. The supreme priest had the city's political and religious power. Agricultural fields spread across these cities which were traversed by irrigation channels that used the river's water to water cultivations and animals would drink. Most of the city's citizens were farmers and shepherds, but there were also artisans that sold their own products at markets. Because of their well-being, both cities began to grow but so did the conflicts between them due to the control of land. These battles arose military leaders that little by little turned into monarchs, into kings. Between the years 3000 and 1000 BC, Mesopotamian lands were conquered by various towns or cities. The first one was the Arcadian Empire, then the Babylonian Empire, followed by the Assyrian Empire, and finally the Persian Empire. So, we've got to know part of Mesopotamia's history. But do you know why it has been such an important civilization for humanity? Well, there are many reasons, but the first one is because Mesopotamia was where around 3500 BC the first written language was found. At first, it was composed by simple drawings called pictograms. Look at these examples. Over time, these drawings were simplified and started to transform into symbols, which is what we know today as cuneiform writing. As you can see, this writing was made with a wooden punch over clay boards. Another great contribution Mesopotamia made was its art. They created the ark and vault that helped them construct magnificent temples and palaces. To decorate the walls and doors within these temples and palaces, they used paintings like this one, where the King Ashurbanipal is hunting lions. By the way, before we say goodbye, do you know what country Mesopotamia is today? Well, it's Iraq. You can see it here. Goodbye friends, and don't forget to subscribe to Happy Learning TV. The development of early fermented beverage. The availability of potable water is the main problem in some parts of Middle East countries. The same problem that Sumerians encountered during their time. Cereal grain is one of the abundant food resources in Sumeria. To solve the problem of potable water sources, Sumerian come up with the idea of fermenting the cereal grain as an alternative drinking liquid. This fermented beverage is what we call today, ale or commonly known as beer. Sumerians also believes in different goddesses, whom they always associated their lives with. The Mesopotamian goddess Ceres, was the patron demon of beer. She is the daughter of the goddess Ninkasi. Although, beer as we know it had its origins in Mesopotamia, fermented beverages quickly spread around the world from Mesopotamia as the drink was shared with kings and rulers. 
the beginning of beverage industry. Because of the abundant supply of ferment cereal grain, some sold the product to other who don't have the capacity in producing it for their own consumption. This is the beginning of the establishment of the forerunner of today's bar, known before as tavern, from the Latin word taverna, and from the Greek word taverna, which originally means a shed or workshop. A tavern is a place of business, where people gather to drink alcoholic beverages and be served food, and, mostly historically, where travelers would receive lodging. An inn is a larger scale of a tavern, it has a license to put up guests as lodgers. Taverns during this time are known as a place that served ale also known as alehouse or alehouses. In fact, during the Sumerian period, taverns are the social gathering place for every man. Meanwhile, the following are some of the paintings of the great artists that showcase and give us ideas how do the early taverns look like during that period. In England during the 13th century, early taverns are traditionally run by women also known as alewives. By the 19th century, the word tavern was evolved into pub public houses. In fact, in the Code of Hammurabi, the Babylonian king, a law about cereal grains value, as payment for every serving of ale was also cited. The law 108 mentioned. If a wine seller female does not take grain for the price of a drink but takes money by the large weight, or if she makes the measure of drink smaller than the measure of grain, they shall call that wine seller to account and throw her into the water. Moreover, during the Greek period, people traveled due to the following reasons religion, sports or games, and conquest. Later, in particular during the Industrial Revolution, people tend to travel not just for religious purposes but also because of education, health, and even for leisure. The Tavern and the Beverage Industry in America It was the year 1643 when the beginning of beverage service industry was started in America. Taverns in America were introduced by the British. However, the distinction between the American Tavern and the British Tavern, is the inclusion of entertainment in the American Tavern in a form of prostitution. In fact, this also what Philippines bars are patterned from. In Massachusetts, a town with no tavern were penalized, often, taverns are built near the church. This is because, during that time, there is no heater in every building that could minimize the cold temperature during the winter season. So, after worship service, people gathered in taverns, to warm themselves by drinking alcoholic beverages. The same with, when important matters are needed to discuss by the community leader to the people. In America, consumption of alcoholic beverages is not that really is people's vice, yet it is just a way to give heat to their body when the environment is cold. In the year 1850, taverns became large-scale inns and later became hotels. They were designed like a palace but open for public use. Taverns also serve as an important place in American history, because this served as a gathering place of American revolutionaries in planning against the British government. The implementation of Prohibition Law Started during the 1885s and formally passed in the 1920s, also known as the 18th Amendment Law were all alcoholic beverage manufacturers, sellers, and importation of alcoholic beverages in America is illegal. This causes, lot of people loses their jobs, and the government loses a large amount of tax revenue. In fact, according to American historians, this implemented law is also known as the Great American Depression. Because of the alcohol prohibition, illegal actions and activities by the people were started. This was the beginning of, first, speakeasies and the blind pigs. Speakeasies is a place for rich American to have the drinks illegally produced and consumed. While blind pig, is the term call for a drinking place for the poor. This is the time where the drink called cocktail started and gained popularity. This is because, since alcoholic beverages were sold with poor quality, the bartender mixes with other liquids or beverages just to improve the taste of the drinks. Second, the moonshines, a term used to call for those illegal liquors produced, transported and sold during nighttime. 
Third is, moonshining, a term used to call for the illegal production of alcoholic beverages with no permit from the local government. The fourth one is, the bootleggers the term used by anyone who smuggles illegal alcoholic beverages in flask by concealing it in their boots. Did you know that Coca-Cola was invented because of the implementation of the Prohibition Law? In the year 1933, the 21st Amendment repealing the Prohibition Law was passed the called Dramshop Law. Dramshop Law were implemented to protect American citizen form incident caused by drunk drivers as alcoholic beverage consumption of now legalize. Dramshop Law is also known as the Third Party Liability Law. The law that transfers the liability on the damaged property from the drunken driver to the server or the place that served the drink to the driver. The word dram means small drink. While shop refers to place that serve drinks, dram shop law were comprises of the following parties first party of the victim, second party is or the drunk offender, while the third party refers to the bar and the server that serve the drinks to offender. Furthermore, in today's practices, United States implemented as strict guidelines in handling and even serving alcoholic beverages. In fact, all bar and beverage service business, under the legal age are not allowed to handle and serve alcoholic beverages to the guest. And it is also mandated that under age are not authorized to enter bar premises. In the Philippines, Pinoy signs law versus drunk driving according to Delon Porkler, the Philippine Star published last May 31, 2013, President Aquino has signed into law a measure that would penalize drivers found to be driving under the influence of liquor or prohibited drugs with up to three months in prison and a fine 20,000 Republic Act 10,586 or the Anti-Drunk and Drug Driving Act of 2013, also imposes harsher penalties in cases of drunk or drug drivers getting involved in accidents, especially if there are casualties. There will be a maximum fine ranging from 100,000 for physical injuries incurred in accidents, and P500,000 if such collision resulted in somebody's death. Aside from these, the Land Transportation Office shall confiscate and suspend for 12 months the license of a non-professional driver for the first conviction. On second conviction the license would be perpetually revoked. For professional drivers, their license would be confiscated and perpetually revoked for the first conviction, which shall be the basis to disqualify the driver from being granted any kind of driver's license thereafter. Refusal to comply with mandatory tests for field sobriety and drug tests will result in confiscation and automatic revocation of license, aside from other penalties provided and or other pertinent laws. Furthermore, the owner and or operator of the offending vehicle, in case of vehicles for hire, will be just as directly and principally held liable together with the offender for the fine and the award against the offender for civil damages. However, the operator of the vehicles for rent may be exculpated if he has exercised extraordinary diligence in the selection and supervision of his drivers in general and the offending driver in particular. Section 7 now mandates the mandatory alcohol and chemical testing of drivers involved in motor vehicular accidents, so that will now be a staple, Val told a news briefing in Malacanang, adding that a breathalyzer would be used to verify alcohol or drug consumption. The development of beverage industry in the Philippines, the San Miguel Corporation, Founded by Don Enrique Maria Barreto de Huizaza in San Miguel District in Manila in the year 1890. It is also known as the La Fabrica de Cerveza de San Miguel, and the first brewery in Southeast Asia. In the year 1913 it became a corporation and began exporting beer in Guam, Hong Kong and Shanghai. Later, in the year 1922 the company started producing soft drinks at the Royal Soft Drinks plant. 
In the year 1925 they started producing ice cream at the Magnolia Ice Cream Plant. And in 1927, they started bottling of Coca-Cola in the Philippines. In 1938, San Miguel Corporation entered the glass industry, supplying the company's bottling needs. And in the year 1963, San Miguel Brewery was renamed San Miguel Corporation, the largest food, beverage and packaging company in the Philippines. Furthermore, Asian Brewery is the second beverage company in the Philippines. Founded by Lucio Tan in Cabuyao, Laguna in the year 1982. For more details about Asian Brewery, and some latest and leading food and beverage companies in the Philippines, please do have additional research to learn more. And that's all for this chapter. I hope you have learned from my discussion. Please do prepare for your chapter 1 activity. Thank you so much for listening, and God bless you all.